Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. In the name of our Creator, amen. What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? Our gospel reading for this morning, Thanksgiving Day, is from Matthew. It asks those questions that are perhaps already obsessing you this morning. And it is one of the most frequently quoted passages in all of Scripture. Look at the birds. Consider the lilies. Now, there are many ways to hear Jesus' exhortation to his disciples in this moment. His words can be used actually to chastise those of us who are a bit overly managerial. (laughs) As in, stop trying to control everything, consider the lilies. They can be used to justify a sort of laissez-faire stance towards life and career, as in, God will provide, or let go, let God. But sometimes that approach doesn't quite work. Let's get this show on the road, said my mother to me some years ago on this very morning. I was at her house early to help her get the turkey into the oven. That bird's not going to cook itself. And she was right, of course. But look at the birds. Consider the lilies. Jesus offers these words to his disciples and to crowds of followers as part of his extended sermon on the mount. He is at the very beginning of his public ministry, and he is laying out for all, within earshot, his perspective on how the world is put together. And his message seems to me this morning not so much, don't worry, be happy, as it is simply, Remember. Remember. Remember that you do not live alone, even when you feel alone. Remember that very little of this is up to you. Remember, recall, as your pilgrim ancestors understood as they wandered in the Sinai Desert, that you live embedded in a system of love, a nexus of love, a chain of provision. Open your eyes and look and see. Birds, lilies, a system of supply and demand that begins and ends in God. It's not about neglecting the details necessarily. It's not about letting go and letting God, if that letting go is a flight from responsibility and engagement. It's more about living our days with a kind of perspective that God has made us for the love of God. That God has made us for the love of God and that we live only because God loves. On this most American of holidays, The spirit of this day counters a most cherished and dearly held American myth, the myth of the rugged individual, the myth of individual accomplishment, of personal striving, of bootstraps. Nothing we have done, we are reminded today, nothing we have accomplished has been done or accomplished without the grace of God and the support of others. Seen and unseen. We drive to our private destinations on public streets. Our very bodies are mostly water that comes to us filtered and purified by public agencies. The air we breathe is only as clean as it is because others have bothered to protect it for us. Oh God, says one of my favorite prayers in our Episcopal prayer book, in our order for Compline, a prayer for the close of day. O God, 
Your unfailing providence sustains the world we live in and the life we live. Watch over those both night and day who work while others sleep. And grant that we may never forget that our common life depends upon each other's toil. Depends upon each other's toil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God's unfailing providence, our common life, each other's toil. To consider each of these today is to acknowledge our very lives and bodies as gifts. To recognize our place in the world primarily as recipients. To recognize that we have done nothing to deserve our lives or most of what we have. We've done nothing to deserve the 2.1 billion times each one of our hearts will beat if we live to the age of 70. Listen to the words of the prophet Joel this morning. Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine give their full yield. Joel's words this morning, like the words of Jesus, are asking you, asking us, to lift up our heads, to look around, to open our eyes and look and see. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of clean, cool water, and most of all, that we live because God loves that we live connected to each other and to the rest of God's creation by the grace of a power not our own. We get put in our place in moments when we have such a realization, and that place is a good place to be. It's the place of gratitude. Now, if you've listened closely this morning, you've realized that Jesus and Joel are up to something else on this Thanksgiving day. Each of their words explored the link between gratitude and anxiety. Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life, asks Jesus. Do not fear, comes the refrain from Joel. I have a friend, an Anglican monk, who lives through all sorts of little spiritual disciplines each day. And one of them is to tick off when he is anxious or upset. To tick off on the five fingers of one hand, five reasons to be thankful. Five reminders that God's care abides. Five reminders that he is not in it all by himself. It's not raining. I slept well last night. I'll have something to eat when I get home. My parents died as they would have wanted to die. That kid who plays Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody is amazing. <laughs> like a long look at the birds of the air, the unfolding of this brother's hand helps him gain a corrective view. And perhaps you need that corrective view this morning. Fear and anxiety are the tenor of our times. We have serious cause to worry about the future of democracy as authoritarian regimes around the world callously disregard human rights. And as here at home, partisan hatred corrodes the idea of shared goals, the idea of a common welfare. We have serious cause to worry about the fate of our fragile earth, this island home. Illness, unemployment, financial anxiety are present, very present, deeply present in many of our own lives or in the lives of people we love. And then, of course, there are the anxieties that attach to some of the particulars on this day of feasting 
anxieties which the media have been working double time to foreground in recent days. There are, of course, the tensions of travel and traffic. Taking up what has become a journalistic cliche every November, a Boston Globe writer this last week listed off overdone meat, mashed potatoes that taste like wallpaper paste, hungry guests, harried hosts. After dispensing the by now expected warnings of partisan smackdowns while passing the gravy, the Globe concluded, quote, despite the Instagram gauzy anticipation, Thanksgiving sometimes ends with the host in the garage slugging a jug of lukewarm Chardonnay. <clears throat> so much the world seems to say to us. So much can just unravel in that quest to achieve what local food guru Chris Kimball called on public radio some years ago, the Rockwell moment. You know that moment, don't you? Family gathered, enormous roasted bird being set forth by an aproned grandmother hovering over the tabletop on its platter with all of the pregnant majesty of the Hindenburg about to lock, dock at Lakehurst. <laughs> Scripture this morning invites us to live differently. Look at the birds of the air, says Jesus. Remember that you are the recipient of a gift. Your own life, the life of those you love, the love and care of an abiding God. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, says the God of the prophet Joel. Heaven and nature are singing to you this day. And today you are asked invited to pause, to look, to listen. Look at the birds of the air, says the poet Mary Oliver in her poem, Wild Geese. I read that poem every year on this day, and I'd like to leave you with a few lines from it this morning. The poet has herself been watching birds, wild geese, honking and flying in mysterious formation. High, she says, in the clean blue air. And she concludes her poem with these words. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination. Calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. Look at the birds of the air. Consider the lilies of the field. Be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. Welcome to your place in the family of things. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>